Hello, and welcome to another Esri Canada video tutorial. In this tutorial, you will be introduced to how Model Builder can be used with ArcGIS for Desktop 10. A model is a representation of reality that contains only factors that are important to your workflow and creates a simplified, manageable view of the real world. Model Builder is an application used to conduct geographic processing or geoprocessing functions in ArcGIS. Visually, it is a flowchart. However, the power of Model Builder is that it allows you to automate geoprocessing functions and chain together multiple tools with no programming required. Once built, a model can be saved, shared, and reused at a later time. In this tutorial, we will create a new model using geoprocessing tools. We will then export the model as both a graphic and as a Python script. We will then create a second model using some of the more advanced functions that are available with Model Builder. Let's begin by extracting the data that you will use in this tutorial. Navigate to the Model Builder 10x zip file that you downloaded. Unzip the data to a location that is easy to remember. In this video, we will be using the C drive. Once the data has been unzipped, open ArcMap. Once ArcMap is loaded, click Cancel on the Getting Started window that appears. Select the Add Data icon and navigate to the Model Builder 10x folder. You may need to connect to the folder first. Once you are there, open the data subfolder and select ab.shape, nb.shape, and sk.shape. When you have selected them all, click Add. The shape files contain boundary data for the provinces of Alberta, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. Open Arc Toolbox by selecting the Arc Toolbox icon. Dock the Arc Toolbox window so that it is not in the way of your map. Additionally, you may wish to use the Auto Hide feature here to minimize the Arc Toolbox window when it is not in use. You can open the window again at any time by hovering your mouse over it. In the Arc Toolbox window, right-click anywhere in the empty white space and select Add Toolbox. Navigate to the Model Builder 10x folder and select the New Toolbox icon. Name the new toolbox Merge.tbx. When you are ready, select the Merge Toolbox and click Open. Right-click on the newly created Merge Toolbox and select New, Model. Drag and drop the three layers from the table of contents into the new Model Builder window that appeared. The layers should now appear as blue ovals. You may need to resize your Model Builder window. Move the Model Builder window to the side and return to the main ArcMap window. Click on the search icon to open the search window. Under the Tools tab, type the word Merge before clicking the search icon. The Merge tool should be the first result in the list. The tool is located within the Data Management Toolbox but can easily be found using the search window. Drag the Merge tool from the list of results into the Model Builder window. Use the Connect tool to connect the three input provinces to the Merge tool. Declare each of the input provinces as an input dataset. Once connected, the Merge tool in the output oval should become colored in. Notice that the output has taken on the name of the first input that was assigned. Double-click the output oval. Set the output, save in the data subfolder, and change the output name to Prairies. Click OK. Double-click on the Merge tool to examine it. Notice that it looks just like a regular geoprocessing dialog box with input and output layers. Close the dialog box by clicking Cancel. Click Model in the menu bar and select Model Properties. In the General tab, name your model as Model Prairies. Give it the label Prairies Model. Give your model an informative description. And finally, check the Store Relative Path Names box. When you are finished, open the Parameters tab. From here, you can set the parameters that will be used in the model. A parameter can be declared that allows the user to choose their own input data for use in the model. Alternatively, a model can contain all the necessary information to run and consequently have no parameters set. Click on the Iteration tab. From here, you can set the number of times that you want the model to run. The number of iterations can also be determined based on a variable from a source table. Click OK in the Model Properties dialog box. Run your model. Click Close on the dialog box that appears. The shadow that appears beneath the Merge tool in the output oval shows that the model has been run. 
right click the output oval and click the add to display option. The new layer should now be visible in the table of contents. Right click the prairies layer and open the attribute table. Notice that the layer is made up of the three input province layers. One method for sharing your model with others is to export the model to a script. From the Prairies model window, click Model in the menu bar. Navigate to Export, and then select To Python Script. Save your output to the Model Builder 10x folder and name the output file as Prairies. Click Save. You can also export your model as a graphic. To do this, click Model in the menu bar, and under Export, select To Graphic. Export your model as a JPEG. Save the model to the Model Builder 10x folder and name it prairies.jpg. Click OK. Save your model. The model has now been saved as both a Python script and as a graphic. You can view and edit the Python script using any text editor on your computer. Notice that the inputs and the processes that were added in the Model Builder window are visible within the Python script. The exported graphic is also visible in the same folder. Models that you create can contain multiple tools and can be designed to be reusable. We will now create a model that allows anyone to define the input and output datasets. The model will clip and buffer an input railway dataset by a user-defined provincial boundary and produce a single output. The model will also contain labels that describe each of the processes that occur. Insert a new data frame on your map. Click the Add Data icon. Select on.shape and rail.shape and click Add. Update the symbology of the rail layer to make the layer more informative on your map. Create a new model within the Merge toolbox. Add the rail layer to your model. Return to the search window and search for the Clip tool. Once it is loaded, add the clip tool to your model. Using the connect tool, connect the rail layer to the clip tool. Be sure to set the rail layer as an input feature. Right click on the clip tool and under make variable, highlight from parameter and then select clip features. Right click on the new clip features oval that has appeared and select model parameter. A small p has appeared next to the oval which indicates that this variable is now a parameter. Setting this variable as a parameter means that the user can now define what area they want to use for clipping the railway. Because a parameter has been introduced, this model will not be colored in like the previous model was. Return again to the search window and find the buffer tool. Once loaded, add the buffer tool to your model. Connect the output from the clip tool to the buffer tool. Once connected, right-click on the output from the clip tool and select Intermediate. An output that is marked as intermediate will be deleted after the model runs. Larger models can contain dozens of intermediate steps that are only necessary for finding the final output. Double click on the output oval from the buffer tool and make sure that the output path is set to the data subfolder. Change the output name to rail underscore buffer dot shape. Click OK. Right click on the buffer output oval and select model parameter. By doing this, you are allowing the user to define where they wish to save the final output. Rename the buffer output oval to output. Double click the buffer tool. Set the linear unit equal to 1000 meters. Set the dissolve type to be all. Click OK. The model is now complete. However, if you wish to share the model with others, it is best to include some documentation. Right click on the clip features oval and select create label. Give the clip features oval a descriptive label. Add any additional labels that you believe would help annotate the following model. In the menu bar, click model and then select the model properties option. Give your model a name, a label, and a description. Be sure to check the box for storing relative path names. When you are finished, your model properties box should look similar to this. Click OK. Save and exit your model. Try running your model. 
Notice that you are prompted for an input feature and an output location. Add the ON layer from the table of contents as your input, and make sure that the output is going to the data subfolder. Name the output ON underscore rail underscore buffer dot shape, and click OK to execute the model. A new layer titled ON underscore rail underscore buffer should now be visible in the table of contents. This layer contains a buffer that highlights areas in Ontario which are within one kilometer of a railway. Congratulations! You have now successfully used Model Builder to create your own customized model. If you would like to learn how to do more with your newly created data, visit any of our other tutorials for ArcGIS.